Almost forgot the microphone. Well, hello, everybody. Um, I'm back, and uh, we're gonna keep going on with this uh, this Pong clone here. Since uh, I am between jobs, I got all the time in the world. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, I think the last video was like two weeks ago. Um, week and a half, something like that. And if I remember correctly, we finished up the main menu and uh, we've got the game instance here that allows us to... Whoops. Bump my keyboard. Uh, allows us to get the networking going. I commented stuff out as we don't have that ready yet and it was preventing build errors. So, let's see, what do we want to do and dive into this time? Compare my other game real fast. Uh, let's... I think the... Maybe the player controller, so we haven't done any of that stuff yet. So let's do some control work, shall we? Yes, we shall. So again, this is going to be built off of C++, so we are going to need... Yes. Let's start with the player controller. So all classes, we want a player controller. We'll call this the Pong controller. And it will go into public and a core folder. I think that's what we've been named. Yeah, Pong is the uh, prefix. to get the uh, the keyboard microphone back. I've got a new keyboard down here with uh, got the blade, the KBD fans blade recently and uh, I'm rocking some pewter switches which have a nice light kind of clackety a little bit more clicky than the thocky that I had previously. All right, so this is our pong player controller. And what we need some controls. And they're going to be pretty basic. So all under a protected, could be private, but let's do protected. We need a begin play override. We need a tick. I think. Do we need a tick? Are we ever ticking? I don't know if we ever do anything on the tick, but whatever. Set up input component override and an on possess override. And then our own functions, we need a client reliable because this is a going to be a LAN networked Pong clone. This is in the Pong controller UI category. This is our setup game UI function. And another function that we're going to want, this one is just toggle in game menu so that we can pop up a menu in the game when we hit like escape or something. And then we need a U property, edit anywhere, blueprint, rewrite, category, on controller, config. And this is a U pong game instance pointer. Pong game instance. We'll go ahead and do a forward de declaration of our Upong game instance. And that's our header. Shrink this. Make sure I can see stuff. Okay, over in the implementation. <clears throat> Let's just do this the easy way. 
Alt Enter Generate. It's also a uh, this new keyboard is a 60%, so I'm having to get used to holding down the function key <laughs> to use my wads for arrow keys. go getting the hang of it ah <laughs> jinxed myself all right that's it okay now begin play we need to have our super begin play the pong game instance is going to be set to get game instance we're going to use the template override here of the type of view game instance and then we want to run setup game UI. And UI stuff, as a reminder for network, uh, UMG is only on the client, so that's why we want that to be a client call. Uh, this is a super, super tick. That's why I'm wondering if we even need that. A super setup input component call here, and then input component, whoop, input component we want to bind an action in game menu. When it is pressed, we want to call. A, this is our bind back. This will open toggle game. There we go. So the address of that function on this object when we hit that button, which I don't think we've set up yet, but we will. So we'll have a little, you gotta be able to pull up a menu in a game. Super on possess first, and then we want to set up the camera. We haven't done this yet, but there's going to be a camera that we set in the level, just kind of looking downwards on the Pong arena. And that camera is what, after we spawn in the players join, that's the camera that we want their vision to go to. So, you gameplay statics, which is in Kismet gameplay statics. I, un, uh, Rider for Unreal just auto adds that kind of stuff if, if you let it. So, we want to get all actors of class. The world context object is us, and then a camera actor. That's the kind of class we want to find. And then we want to pass in the camera array as the out parameter to be filled up. Now, if our camera array, if the number of things that we've found is greater than zero, there's only gonna be one camera in the world that we know, because we're making the world. We just want to set view target with blend to camera array at position zero, the first one and the only one that we find. And I mean, you could do this too. just to be safe. Now, to toggle in-game menu, I don't know if we have this function yet, but in, we get check to make sure that we have that game instance, Pong game instance, in-game. Yeah, we don't have this function yet, so it'll be in-game load menu widget. Well, we probably have it, but I've commented it out. And this again, we could do the whole. That's calling a function on a pointer. We first want to make sure that it's not null, that it is that we have an address to it, and then we can check to make sure it's not, we're not uh, garbage collecting or something on it. Uh, all right, and then for our setup game UI, same thing. We want to go, this one we might have already, load game, nope, okay. 
load game HUD widget. Okay, that is our player controller right there. That's it. Pretty simple. I'm gonna go ahead and build it. I don't know what... Okay, this is again... A situation where it built in the other thing and it's not building here, so what have I done wrong? Hey, Boglier! <laughs> Welcome back! I'm doing alright, it's been a rocky road of trying to find employment. Um, lasting employment. Why is this... Two arguments. I didn't give it two ar two arguments. It has three. Oh, silly writer. Tricks are for kids. Why'd you double up on those parentheses? Sometimes I, I type faster than the auto uh, context code thing creates stuff, so I'll it'll not detect that I've already thrown in some parentheses or curly brackets or bracers or something and um, it'll double up at times. Okay, so we now have our Pong controller. We need to go ahead and make a blueprint off of that. We'll call it the BP Pong controller and we'll throw it in blueprints. There's our Pong controller. Save on compile. Uh, have we done the game mode yet? That's another thing that we need to do. Yeah, so let's do the game mode next so that we can actually like use this kind of stuff. So, new C++ class. Game mode. Game mode base. Yeah, this is multiplayer match stuff, spawn points, match state. I usually only do the game mode base. It's a more simple game mode. This one adds on more stuff and is more like an Unreal Tournament game mode. So we're, game mode base is usually what you want to go for. So Pong game mode. Put it in public and core again. going to keep plowing right ahead and try, try and get all this this core um, gameplay stuff coded today. Well, we'll see how far we can get. I don't have anything to do. Alright, this is the Pong game mode. Uh, public void start game const and avoid end game. So these are our two functions we'll call when we want to start the game and end the game. And a protected section, we need a post login. 
override. And we want a log out override. And an integer for connected players. Initialized to zero. That's it for the header. Pretty simple. In the implementation, Look at that, getting the hang of my 60% keyboard and its function key layout stuff. Okay, we'll start with the post login. This is, this goes when um, somebody logs in, obviously. Super post login, send the new player through, so it calls the parent class. Now we want to possess a pawn. We're gonna have, um, the pong bars, the, the paddles in the world, and we need a logging in person. Rather than having player starts, we want them to possess one of those paddles. So we're gonna make an array of actor pointers called the pawn array. Again, kind of like what we did with um, the camera, you can play statics, get all actors of class, this is the world object, a Pong player, static class. We haven't made that yet, so this is going to be mad at us. And we pass in the Pawn Array as the out parameter. If Pawn Array dot num is greater than zero, for every actor pointer in the Pawn Array, we want to make a pong player pointer, pong player, and that is cast to a pong player. From that, that actor, we're casting that actor into a pong player pointer. We're gonna make that next, I think. Now, if the pong player and pong player is pawn controlled, so that's a function to tell if it's already controlled or not. And if it is not, then it's then we can possess it. So we want to possess and pass the pong player in there. And then pong player set the owner to the new player. Right? All right. Let's go ahead and comment this stuff out. Now, after we do that on the post login, once we do that, we only want to start start the game if the number of players is two, right? So you don't want to play Pong if there aren't two people in. Okay, on logout, we call end game if somebody quits. We get the world. We want to make sure that we got the world. And then world server travel, and this is, uh, we're just going to basically restart the game, so it get uh, so we can wait for somebody to join in again, right? Okay, starting the game, what's that entail? An actor of the ball array, we want the pong ball. This is again, you gameplay statics, get all actors of class. Uh, this is the world context object, a pong ball. We haven't made that yet, so we have to make all of our little, our gameplay objects. That's, that's next. So if the ball array num is greater than zero again, and is valid, the ball array at position zero, it's going to be a U object so we can call is valid on it. A pong ball. Ball array at position zero. Um, yep, start. So that's a function that's going to be on the pong ball. So let's go ahead and comment that out. And end game is similarly. Actually, same code, 
except we're calling game over on the Pong Ball. Okay, that's the game mode. So we'll stop it. Let's go ahead and make the Pong player and Pong Ball so that we can um, uncomment that stuff. Okay. New C++ class. This is going to be a character class. The Pong player. And it is in core as well. And the reason why character is because I find um, movement, network replicated movement to be much better with the character movement component because you it's using um, I think linear interpolation it's lerping um, the movement over network rather than if you're using a pawn it's going to call things like um, you'll have to do uh, constantly call update position and stuff or manually write these things and it, it just ends up being very um, glitchy and it has issues. Okay. So, under this public, we've got the player input component. We want a new function called, uh, which is blueprint callable, because why not? Pong player. This is a movement function. It is a void move paddle. And we pass in a value. And next, we want to have. Uh, new, another protected section, and in this protected section we have a U property, visible anywhere, blueprint, read only. And this category will be Pong player components, a U static mesh component pointer called static mesh component, U property visible anywhere, blueprint read only, another, another component, this is a U-box component, this is the collider, because we made, <clears throat> I'm going to forward declare this, uh, we made our um, static meshes in Unreal Engine and converted them over into, uh, from a, um, what is it called, BSP, geometry, and converted it to static mesh. They don't have a uh, simple collision, so I found we should have made these in, like, Blender and then exported them, but for simplicity, we just converted geometry. They don't have simple collision, so um, they won't be able to collide with stuff such as the ball. So we have to give them their own box collider. And we want to have a getter. There. Okay. Um, that is... That is that. Now we go over to the... Implementation. Implement that. Move paddle. All right, so... Of these comments. Uh, replicates is true on this Pong player. Get the capsule component. Oops. Set collision profile name. No collision on the capsule. And we want to get the character movement. Set movement mode, move fly, whoop, flying. Max fly speed, this is the paddle, and these are the values I found that feel good. You can obviously change them to how you want your game to play. Deceleration flying, 
So this is to make our paddles stop and not feel like we're on ice. Uh, mass, I don't know if this mattered, but just reducing the mass. Max acceleration, 5,000. There you go, there's your movement. Now the static mesh component, uh, we need to create a default sub-object of use static mesh component. Name it the static mesh. Set up the attachment to our capsule. Set collision profile name to uh, physics actor. Is that's a, a preset, so that's the one we want. Now box component. This uh, this is our this is our actual collision here. Box collision. Get the forward or the the include up there. We want to set up the attachment to the root component, which I believe is going to be the capsule, so you could do get capsule or root. Um, box component, set collision profile name. So, I'm seeing something I did on my other thing. I think you can do this, because C++ does one implicit conversion. So this is a string, and it's implicitly converting it to an F name. So that's that's legal, or you can explicitly do that. That's cleaner, I think. <clears throat> Make it an explicit F name. All right, box component set box extent needs an F vector. This is what worked in my game to match the paddle perfectly, but I don't know if I did the dimensions exactly the same, so we'll see if that's off. Now on begin play, we need to set replicate movement to true. And on the tick, this is how we're going to uh, limit the movement. If get actor location dot x is less than negative 1499 f or get actor location dot x is greater than positive 1499 f then we want to set the actor location not the label to an f vector f math clamp get actor location dot x the minimum is negative 1500 F and the maximum is 1500 F. So that will clamp our X value. Uh, and then we want to run it get actor location dot Y. We just want to keep that and get actor location dot Z and keep that as well. So like Pong, you can only go so far up and so far down. So we're clamping ourselves inside the, the boundary that we want. And that's it. And very simple, our input is very easy. Bind an axis, move up this, and we're gonna call a Pong player, move paddle. When we hit uh, W or S is what we set up. Now, if our value on move paddle is not equal to zero, because we don't want to do stuff if it's zero, add movement input, an f vector of one in the x and zero in anything else, pass the value, and we want to force it to true. Get rid of an extra comma there. And make those. Loads. Okay, that is a Pong player. That's it.
Now over in game mode, we can uncomment this stuff. Whoops. We want to include core pong player. There you go. It works. Huh. Well, that's new to me. I wonder if that is a... If that's a modern C++ thing. Um, a statement. Two separate statements inside of an if parameter. I don't know what's going to happen. Let's, um... Let's try that. Some things that are valid in C++, yep. C it's a C++ 17. Um, so let's not... Let's not do that. Though I am interested... Language, C++. I'm curious. Eh, we'll, we'll leave that for now and I'll investigate that later if you're able to use, um newer C++ in um, Unreal Engine. That doesn't really help with readability though. Kind of makes it a little bit messy in my opinion if we move the definition into the if statement. I guess it maybe helps with optimization. Okay, what have we made so far? Just the controller. So let's go ahead and make our Pong player. Blueprints BP Pong player. All right, moment of truth, static mesh, set it to our Pong paddle. Hey, and it fits, look at that, perfect. Let's also give it our white material. There we go. That is our Pong paddle. So rather than just having these floating static meshes out here, we want to do this. And what did I do? I set that there at negative 2000 and 2000. Negative 2000. Zoom out. And we'll call that um, player one paddle. And this guy is going to be a positive 2,000. And this is our whoop, player 2 paddle. Cool. And we need a game camera. Let's go ahead and throw our game camera in now. So... This game camera is going to be at zero, zero, and a height of 3220. Right there is what I found. We want to rotate him down on the y-axis, tilt him forward 90. There you can see, starting to get that. It is an orthographic camera, and now we're way zoomed in. So we want to Zoom our ortho width out, and what did I do? I did a 5250. And that 
so that because we're gonna make boundaries, right? Uh, and I th think that's it for that. So there's your game camera. We're gonna go ahead and throw these guys into a folder called game objects. Keep things organized. All right. So the pong ball is still a static mesh, uh, just sitting out there. Hello, Colaboris. Welcome back. How you doing? While we're at it, let's make a blueprint off our game mode. BP Pong Game Mode. Alright. New C++ class object. We want our Pong Ball. Which I think is... Just an actor. Cool. Pong ball. This will be in public and in an actors folder. I'm doing all right between between jobs, so I have some free time trying to get the uh, the pong tutorial series all finished up. Have that on YouTube. Nice, OpenGL and Vulkan. I am really wanting to learn Vulkan. I think that would be a, a very valuable use of my time. I did a little bit of DirectX for a bit. I don't know if you're familiar with the YouTube series, um, what's his name, Chili? Chili something? Um, his uh, series on DirectX is one of the best I have ever found. He's, he's extremely knowledgeable, and it's an entertaining tutorial series, too. Okay, so some public functions that we want. I'm going to move these up just to organize. Yeah, so the... Um, that other series of, uh, of um, Battle Grids is on pause because I might revisit it, but there's a lot that I have learned that I need to go back and, like, clean up. Alright, so we want to start a restart and a game over. These are going to be called from outside of the class, so they need to be public. In the protected under begin play... Right? I want to get back to Linux myself. I'm waiting for JetBrains to get Rider for Unreal moved over. They, they're promising Linux support. And when that happens, I will probably go back to, to Arch. Alright, so we need um, to pass in an overlapped actor. This is from the, the delegate. That's where these are coming from. And the other actor. So this is going to be called when our when a, a collision happens. So we need a U property, visible anywhere. I'm quite excited about the Valve Steam Deck for uh, Linux support of gaming. I don't know if you've been following that, but as a Linux person, maybe you have, but Valve is promising that they're gonna have um, anti -cheat, easy anti-cheat and stuff. backseat coding. <laughs> this actually, yeah, I already have this uh, coded, so I know what I'm doing here. That that also is the difference about this. So, blueprint read-only. I think I agree with some people that there's going to be a custom kernel in order to be able to handle the anti-cheat stuff. Alright, static mesh component. Visible anywhere again. Blueprint read only. Pong ball components. This is a U box component. Box component. Again, I don't like doing my includes in here. Save it for your implementation. Another U property. Whoops. 
This one is edit defaults only. Blueprint. <clears throat> I will be here. Read write, category, pong ball, config, I use static mesh. This time this is just a static mesh, ball mesh. New property, edit anywhere, blueprint, read write, category equals pong ball, config. This is a uint 8 B game over, so it's gonna be a it's gonna be a bool. So game over one bit. Go ahead and set the implementation for these. Whoops. Up. Ah. Okay. Implementation. Get rid of that comment. Uh, we have our B replicates is true, and then our static mesh component. Create default sub object, use static mesh component, static mesh. The root component is the static mesh component on this guy. The static mesh component sets simulate physics to true. Set collision enabled to E collision enabled query and physics. Static mesh component set gravity to false. Static mesh component set constraint mode eat off mode to just the XY plane. There's no depth to this game. There's no depth to this game. It's very uh, shallow, you know? Collision. All right, this is where we need to do our include. Box component, set up attachment. That we're attaching, this is kind of like the paddle. We need to give it a collision box. And we're attaching it to the static mesh. This collision profile name. This is a trigger. Box component. Set the box extent. This is where we set it to the size of our ball. And game over is set to false. All right, that is our constructor. On begin play, when the um, when the ball's there, we set replicate it movement to true. If ball mesh has been set, on actor begin overlap, add dynamic this, because we're spawning this guy in via C++, I think. Think. Whoops. There we go. All right, so we're at, we're adding and binding on paddle hit to this delegate. So when the actor, when an overlap begins, um, we're calling on pot paddle hit. Tick. We're not doing anything special in start set actor location to an f vector of zero vector. Yeah, we're calling, that's right. So we have to delete the ball and spawn a new ball um, when, when you score, obviously. So that's why we have to set the static mesh um, through C++ because we are not spawning a blueprint. We're spawning a C++ actor. This is the only, um, uh, only uh, uh, gameplay object that will be pure C++ and have no uh, blueprint. With math. Um, welcome back. Rand range. Okay, so when we're starting, we want to, the ball needs to boop, kind of, you know, launch off. And we, I want to give it a random launch. 
Maybe this isn't like old school Pong. I don't really know what they did, but random bool. Okay, so the X is a random between negative 300 and 300, so the X value is going to um, have a bit. Remember, our X is uh, oddly enough. Let's, if I can remember. Okay, yeah, X is up and down, so it'll kind of, you know, an angle, so we're angling up and down a little bit from negative 300 to 300. Our Y value, move these, okay, our Y value is um, going to be a random, so we're making a random bool, right? And we're, based on the value of the random bool, is it, if it is a yes, Y is 1. If it's a no, it's a negative 1, right? So we've randomized our Y, and then we're also giving it a bit of a, an acceleration. So that's our Y, and then our Z, nothing in the Z. Whoops. There we go. that to the same line. Does that look better? Okay. Uh, I th think... Oh yeah, start. We also want to set our game over to false. And now restart is the same thing. We set the actor location to zero, and we launch off the ball randomly. Now game over, we set game over to true. Set our mag uh, we set the physics linear velocity to f vector zero vector. So we stop the ball. All right, one last. What? What's going on here? Oh, I don't have a return, doy. There we go. Okay, on paddle hit. This is going to be handling how the ball bounces. I called it on paddle hit. A pong player pointer. Pong player is equal to cast a pong player. Other actor. So we're checking if the other actor that we hit is basically a paddle. And if pong player. And let's do this too. See, I did it again. Typed so fast, it didn't get me inside the break brackets. We're making a constant F vector of ball linear velocity, and we're setting that to the static motion, uh, mesh components get physics linear velocity. So we're getting the current linear velocity of the ball. And we now want the paddle's linear velocity. So we're getting the Pong player, which we just hit. And we're getting the static mesh component off that guy, as well as its linear velocity. So we're storing that. Next, um, we need, now, those are the two things, that's our data coming in. Now we need to make a new ball linear velocity. Paddle linear velocity dot x, so the old, so, so we're getting the paddles x value. And we're going to add a random range from negative 1000 point f to 1000. Did it, don't do that. 
Um, so that's our x value. The y is ball linear velocity y, and we're just inverting the y. And the original z, which is 0. So there's our x, y, and our z. <clears throat> so there's our new linear velocity. Hopefully that made sense. We're not doing real physics here. We're just sending it in a different direction, opposite of the of the y value that it was going, so flipping, and then kind of um, taking, adding a little, little angle based on the angle that the paddle hit it at. Static mesh component, whoops. Set physics linear velocity to the new ball linear velocity. So we're just adding it and setting it. Okay, so if we did not hit a Pong player, what did we hit? We hit a wall, which we don't have made yet, so we have to do that. A Pong wall. So, we're gonna check if we hit a Pong wall. And, if we hit the Pong wall, we're gonna do something. If we hit a wall, do some math. Um, and then also, the last one that we could possibly hit is a Pong goal. If we hit a goal, restart. That's where we call the restart. And goal will handle the scoring itself. Okay. That's the implementation for the Pong Ball. Let's go ahead and build that. Maybe I think we'll do the wall next. I believe an actor as well. Yep. So, new C++ class, actor, Hong Wall. Put this in public and actors. And I'm gonna go ahead and make the goal at the same time, which is also an actor. Once this is done compiling, we'll make the goal too, and we'll do both of those at the same time. Back to the engine, new C++ class, actor, pong goal, public actors. coffee and my mini fridge is so far away to grab a water okay start with the wall um, again we're gonna want a U box component forward declared because we're gonna have a collider and the wall is very simple we have a static mesh component and a box co component. That's all a wall is. Excuse me. And we can just duplicate that line. Static mesh component, static mesh component, U box component, box component. That's it. And over here, um, we do not tick, so we can get rid of the tick. Away tick. No 
why yeah I don't have that so those are in protected there we go all right in the constructor static mesh component create default sub object of st static mesh component Standard stuff that we've done a million times. Box component, we're just putting on a static mesh as well. We want to set the box extent to, we need to make this by the way, which we will do. And set the collision profile name to physics actor. And again, let's get rid of that implicit conversion and just pass it what it wants. Uh, that's it. That's a wall. All right, the goal. Same thing. Goal is pr is very much the same as a U box component again. In fact, it might be totally identical. It just has some extra functions. So we could have done an inheritance, but you know. So we have an overlapped actor. This is again taken from a delegate. I don't know where that GUID came from. Uh, we do not have a tick again, a U property. Visible anywhere, blueprint read only. Long. Heh. <laughs> is the same thing because I even copied over this this stuff in the other file all right then we have an edit anywhere blueprint read write category pong goal config int player number this um so that we know where'd we score <laughs> okay Implementation time. We don't tick. Static mesh component, box component, set box extent. The goal is 100 in the X, 2500 again. It's the same thing. Just has that, I guess it just has an extra thing, except the collision this time is a, um, is a trigger. All right, on begin play, add, on begin overlap, add dynamic, this, and the function we want to bind is score. Scoring, add the pong ball header. Check, did we just 
hit a pong ball. Hopefully, because... Actually, we don't need to do that because we're probably deleting it. So we're grabbing the game state. We gotta make this. This is the game states where we're gonna handle the server stuff um, of scoring, right? So we don't have this code yet. But if we have a pong game state, we're going to increment the score using the player number, and that's where it's set here. So then we're passing over and knowing um, which who who just scored, and get rid of your tick function because we don't need it. So there's that. Let's go ahead and go ahead and make the game state while we're at it since we know we need it now. This is just your standard game state. Game state base again. Game mode base, game state base because we're not making an Unreal tournament. So Pong game state. Pong game state. Public and in core. So a game mode holds the rules, game state holds the current state of the game. That's a way to think about that. Game state replicates from server to client, so it can be, it's a good way to access things um, that are networky. Read up on the network compendium for more information about that. Okay, game state. This is our Pong game state. All right, things we need. We need a server reliable blueprint callable function called restart game. We also need a server reliable blueprint callable if we ever want to grab these in blueprints. So an increment score int player number. That's what we're calling over here, which we can now it. There, now it's happy. Okay, and then two other functions. Uh, hold on, let's do the variables first. We need, we'll have getters. Um, we want a virtual void get lifetime replicated props because we have replicated variables. We will. Here's one right now. A replicated edit anywhere blueprint read write category pong game state config and this is an int player one score set to zero uh, go ahead and copy that header with an int player two score as well now we want to have the score to win stored here because we're going to be checking if we won. I'm going to set this just to three for now because we don't need to have it super high for testing and we need to replicate it, edit anywhere, blueprint, read, write, category equals pong game state again config and this is a bool b game over false. I'm not doing a uint8 one bit here because I just want, um, there is no, um, as far as I know, there's no constructor for this game state where, is, where to set that, so I'm just doing it as a default. Okay, and then our getters int get player one score, const return player one score. 
and an int get player to score const return player to score. Generate implementation and generate implementation. Oh yeah, and that guy too. Okay, real fast over here. Increment score if player number is one. Player one score. Boop, boop. Else if player number is two. Player two score. Bump bump. Otherwise. Where do we put our Pong? There we go. Yeah, in the game instance. So we're going to just go on. Same. Warning. Text. Player number not set on Pong goal. So that we know that we messed up. That's why I'm not doing zero and one. One and two. That way if it comes in as zero, I know that I forgot to set it. All right, player one score. It also just is legible. You know, if it was player zero and player one, programmers would get it. That just doesn't, doesn't work. We have player one and player two. Ready player one, you know? Score to win. All right, so if either score is equal to score to win, we wanna get the game mode from gameplay statics get game mode with this as the world object. Now if we have a game mode, we want to now cast that to our Pong game mode. All these embedded ifs, because you want to make sure that you have these before you do anything with them. We want to set our game over to true, and on the game mode, we're calling end game. It wants that move to inner scope. I'm not going to do that because I don't have my C17 set right now. Okay, so restarting the game. Set up an integer players ready for a player state. Pointer player state in our player array. Uh, we haven't made the Pong player state either. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do that. It's an info. I guess I've never looked at the hierarchy of uh, player state. All right, so this is Pong player state. Put this in public core. This is, um, this holds the state of the player, you know, for like info. So we want to have a way to restart the game after it's been won. So I made a little check that we'll see it'll pop up play again yes or no you hit whoa well that's not fun probably because I hadn't finished doing this stuff but it made a player state so we're good let's go ahead and flush that out as well this is our pong player state Public bool get play again. And this will return a Boolean that we have not made yet. We'll do ahead, go ahead and throw it in there. A bool be play again, which is set to false by default. And a U function server reliable because we want this to be set on the server side. Set play again. And we pass in a bool. And uh, 
we need a, let's see, sorry. That is a replicated Boolean because it gets, once it's set on the server, it then gets replicated down. So we do need to get lifetime replicated. Lifetime. Come on, get life. Virtual void, get life time. What's going on here? Weird. I messed up the auto suggestion, so I gotta type this out. Alright, implementation, and implementation. Okay, get lifetime, we do our super get lifetime replicated props. Do rep lifetime A pong player state B play again. Yes, we want the net, Unreal Network. All right, B, play again. When we set it is set to B in play again. Now, A game state base, game state, U game play statics. Get game state, this. If we have the game state, A pong game state pointer. We want to cast it again. A pong game state. If pong game state, we're going to call pong game state restart game. And that over here. Back in our game state, what does restart game do? It calls this, set the player ready. We get each player state in the player array, which is stored on a game state. Now we can cast to a pong player state. The player state. And we want to get play again. And if play again returns true on the server side, bump up players ready. Now, if players ready is equal to two, right? So both people are calling it. And only once it's called and it's set to two, we restart the game. So we set game over to false. Player one score is set back to zero. Player two score is set back to zero. And for a player state, Nope. And then we go back through the player array again. You could probably um, make this more, uh, you can optimize this, but that's just how I did it. So you want to make sure that you set their play against all the false when restarting. Game mode base. Game mode is equal to you gameplay statics. Again, get the game mode. And you could probably set these and get these earlier on so that you just have them and not have to constantly keep casting and doing these nested ifs. But I don't know when you get them and when they're ready and stuff at the beginning of the game. So when I was just prototyping this out, this is how I did it. So we want to check if we've got our Pong game mode now. Nope. Um, and if so, Pong game mode, start the game. All right. So if everybody's ready, game over is false, reset the scores, reset their play again um, values, and then start the game. We have a get by lifetime replicated props we don't want to forget about. 
do rep lifetime. A Pong Games date. The player one score. Do rep lifetime. A Pong Games date. Player two score. Do rep lifetime. A Pong Games state. B game over. All right. Those are our three replicated values with those macros. Um, that is it for the game state. I think we did the player state. I believe we finished the goal. All right. Just looking through. And we may, besides some more UI stuff that I have to make, like the in-game menu and the server row and stuff like that. No, we made the server row. Nice. Okay, yeah, we're, we're almost done with all of the classes for, for the Pong clone. Cool. All right, so... Back in our world here, things that we need. We need to make a blueprint off of the game state. We need a blueprint off the player state. So we're we missing Pong. Oh, yeah, the goal. And I think the wall. Yep. blueprints that we needed. Now, we didn't make a wall, so I'm going to make the wall real fast. So geometry, another box, zero, and I th think uh, 50, so 50, 50, 50 maybe, and then Five hundred, maybe. Is it a hundred and a hundred? Two hundred by five thousand by two hundred. That's what I did. Okay. Create static mesh. So I'm gonna just move it over. into art, and this is our SM Pong wall. And go ahead and delete that guy. Ah, I did it in the wrong direction, but... So, yeah, let me do that again. Two hundred by five thousand by two hundred. There we go. Perfect. Okay. And our pong wall. Set the static mesh to pong wall and make it white. Now looking at 
my walls and where I placed them. This was at, right, 1500. That is... Make a new folder for our walls. This is the wall top. Put this at negative 1500 and a zero. And this is our wall bottom. Okay, Pongol. Static mesh is also the Pong wall. Set it to white as well. All right, Pong goals are at a negative 600 and rotated 90 degrees on the Z axis. And that is our goal left. This one is at a positive 2,500. Zero that X out. And this is our goal right. Now we have configs to remember. So if this is player one, goal two on the left, this is player number two will get incremented and this one is player one. Okay. So if we look at our game camera, you can see now, looks pretty good. Actually, that needs to be 2600. That's my bad. There, now it's all even. Nice. Okay. Pong ball. Pong ball. And defaults, just make sure that your pong ball mesh is set. Okay. I think if there's anything else, let's go ahead and set these values in the game mode. Uh, I don't remember which is which, it opened both. That, I think, belongs to that game, and this belongs to this game. Okay. So game state base is Pong game state. Switch the player controller to BP Pong controller. Same Pong player state. We do not have a default Pong class. That will prevent the spawning of it. So there we go. There's that. And in the project settings now, Maps and modes. We want to go to BP Pong game mode. Make sure you have your Pong game instance down here as well. That's all set correctly. Okay. Um, that should have that set up. Now we just have some more. Um, some more UI that we need to do. So we are missing the HUD to show scores and the in-game menu. That's it, all right, so. These are, yeah, we need to make uh, some new classes off of Pong menu widget. So this is our Pong game HUD. This will go in public and UI.
And also... A Pong menu widget of um, Pong in-game menu. Public UI. Okay, let's uh, make these in here first. We want to make WBP Pong Game Hood and WBP Pong In Game Menu. So, horizontal box, this horizontal box will hold the score, this is going to be anchored to the top center, we want to do a 0.5 there, size to content, and inside of that, two texts. This is player one score, and this is player two score. Ah! Can't compile stuff in the editor until you've compiled the, uh, the C++. That's my bad. Let's try that again. Two texts. First one is player one score. Second is player two score. There we go. Player one score, I've given a padding on the right of 500. Set this to zero by default, and a nice big ol' 140. Same thing here for player two score, padding on the left this time of 500. Go to zero, and a big ol' 140. Next, we just want to have a text on the canvas panel. Centered. Move it up a little bit. This says game over. It's the content. So those are that's our game over um, text. And I believe this is not visible. Yeah, this is hidden, and we're gonna bind it. It only pops up if game over is true. And then we want to have a menu for play again, which is a vertical box on the canvas panel, anchored to the center. Excuse me. Uh, 
text inside the vertical box. Asking play again. We can give that a nice italic. And something. 56. And underneath that, a horizontal box. And in that horizontal box, two buttons. The no button and the yes button. Give those text. It says no. This says yes. are set to fill, fill, center the, the words, get rid of the alpha, and we can bump this up to 36, and 36, okay. This vertical pop box, name it the play again menu. And it is also hidden. Okay. Now, we want to set this class settings, parent class, this is of the Pong game HUD. File save. So there, that, I think, is done for that setup for now. All right, in-game menu. Get rid of the canvas panel. Let's do a background blur at, I don't know, four. Then a vertical box. A button. This is our resume button. Three buttons, actually. Resume, leave, and quit. So this is the leave game button. And the quit to desktop button. This vertical box is going to be center and center. Buttons, we want to put text on each button. Make the buttons alpha zero for the minimalism style that we're going for here. All right, text. This one says resume. Did I do anything else special? I don't think I did. I may have in the... That's right. The buttons I gave. 15 padding. So resume, leave, quit. And that's that. Now class settings, Pong in-game menu. Okay, those are made. Now we need to code them. Close all the tabs, open up game HUD, and end game menu. Okay. 
Okay. We need to do some forward declarations. We're going to use both of these. Button and a text block. A protected section first. We want to have a virtual bool initialize override. And a U function of void restart game. And a U function of void quit game. In a private section, we want a U property of visible anywhere, blueprint, read only, meta equals bind widget, and allow private access equals true. Need to have that. This is the U text block pointer of the player one score that will be bound to that. Same header, U text block pointer of player two score. Same header, U button is the no button, and a U button is the yes button. That's that. Generate implementation. Initialize will const b success is equal to super initialize check to make sure the parent worked if so continue but if not return false put a bang in front of that if ensure the no button has been bound otherwise return false um, the no button we want to be on clicked add dynamic this U Pong game hood uh, quit game. And then for the yes button, same thing. Make sure it's bound. And then the yes button on clicked. This U Pong game hood restart game. Restart game. Get the owning player. Get the player state of a Pong player state. And then set play again to true. So that's where we're sending in and calling that function we made, so it's done via this button. Quit game. If we have a menu interface, tear down. Menu interface, load main menu. So we, in the game instance, we need to um, set this stuff up. Oh yeah return true if we've made it through all of that all right that's the game HUD the in-game menu pong in-game menu a protected virtual bool initialize and then in private in game menu button callbacks. The U function void resume pressed. U function void leave game pressed. U function void quit to desktop pressed. And the in-game menu buttons themselves. I think we can, yep, just, if you still have that copied, same header there. A U button, we have our resume button. We need to have our forward declarations. I think just the U button here. Uh, same header, U button, leave game button and a U button quit to desktop button that's it generate implementation
initialize is the same. Bool const b success is equal to super initialize. If it was not successful, return false. Otherwise, our in-game menu buttons, if ensure the resume button, return false. Otherwise, our resume button on clicked, add dynamic, this U pong game, uh, resume pressed. Yep. Uh, same thing with the leave game button, return false. Leave game button on clicked, add dynamic, this U pong game instance, leave game pressed. Quit to desktop button, last but not least. And return true if all of that worked. Resume press, just tear down. Remember, these guys are inheriting from our Yupong widget, so these are set up in the parent class. That's what we're calling here. If menu interface, when we leave the game, we tear down this guy and then we do a menu interface, load main menu. And if we are quitting to the desktop, we get the owning player controller check to make sure we had it. It's that simple. Quit. That's it. All right. Let's compile. And attach it all up. And I think we will be ready to uh, launch this from the a console command and test and test it. job searching for whatever is out there. All right, bind this guy. The text, go to bind here and create a binding. All this um, get player one score. Get game state. Yeah, I've been doing a plugin and engine development uh, contract work, and I'm jumping around trying to find things that'll stick. Cast to Pong game state. I would like to do some game development because I enjoy this. I want to do gameplay logic, actually. All right, so we're binding that score getting the game state, casting it to our Pong game state. We can do this because a game state exists client side, it's replicated over. That's why we have the game state, so that our UI has access to something. Convert this to text, uh, integer, and return. Same thing for player two, create a binding get player two score, get game state, cast pong game state, get player two score, and bind it there. So that'll get us our scores right there. Next, game over, needs to be bound on visibility.
and this is similar. Get game over visibility function. Um, we get the game state. Again, cast to the pong game state. And we get our game over bool. Do a select off of the return value. If game over is true, it's visible. If it's false, it's hidden. Honestly, uh, do not hit testable. It's more important. And uh, play it. The play again is the last thing I think. And that is. Um, we don't have to make anything new there. Just bind it to the same. Get game over visibility. Oh, and that, so, ignore what I said, it needs to be visible because the button's here. Well, actually, self only. Sorry, false is hidden, true is not hit, testable self only. There we go. <laughs> That's that. I don't think there's anything else to do with game HUD. So game HUD is done. In-game menu. Is uh, done because it's all done in C++. Okay. I think now we just need to go into our game instance. And remember how I had commented out a bunch of stuff? Well, we can recomment that in now. See, we now have these things. Game HUD widget. Game HUD class in game menu. Get the game HUD. And our variables down here. Forward declared, so we're prepared. So all of that stuff works. And now over here, we can uncomment out the load the game HUD widget. Do the forward, uh, or the, the include. And then the in-game load widget. Do the include. We need to get the code for that. Easy enough. In game menu is equal to create widget. Upong in game menu. This in game menu class. That's it. Okay, go ahead and hit stop. Oh, create the game HUD widget. We've got that to do as well. So game HUD is equal to create widget U Pong game HUD this game HUD class. I think that's it. And I will make sure there aren't any blueprints to code, but might be done. Knock out Pong in three episodes. Check the level blueprint. No, I don't have anything there. Okay. Doesn't look like that worked. Oh.
open up some of these blueprints, see if there's any, any code at all that I'm forgetting. No. Oh. There are some things in the game instance, such as game HUD class needs to be set to Game HUD, in-game menu class, in-game menu. Okay, save all. Now in our Pong controller, set up game UI. Aha! Can get rid of those. This valid low level might be what's... I don't have this in my other code, so I'm just gonna... I'm gonna test this again, but if it doesn't grab the camera correctly and set the view blend, it might be because, um... of that line in the if statement. Shouldn't do that yet. Okay, stop. Oh! Right. Um, so for the menu, there's something we have to do. Uh, open up your world settings, and we actually need to override to game mode base because we do not want to use any of our custom stuff in the main menu yet. That way when we transfer over to game, this post login and begin play stuff actually hits, so... Right. So now you see the game hood, and we have our little hamburger face. So I'm gonna fix that by testing... I'm gonna yank that code out. I'm remembering everything. Okay, I'm obviously forgetting something of how the... So, just run through all these things. In fact, what I'm going to do actually is PowerShell. going to do it's pong clone I think nope I moved my engine path as well. It's now in um, like four point two seven. 
Unreal 4.2, Unreal Engine, okay. Damn it. <laughs> Unreal Engine, Engine. Binaries, there we go. Weird paths that things get to. All right, hit host. Still not grabbing that camera. Weird, okay. I also forgot to set up input. Ah, we don't have our access mappings either. So. so in access mapping, we need move up W, which is a value of one, and S, which is inverse, whoops, negative one, not negative 10, and an action mapping of in-game menu. And this I'm gonna to set to escape as well as F10. All right, there's that. if I've forgotten something in code somewhere. So, let me look at game mode again. And post login. Oh. First of all, we need to do that, as well as our end game. Oh, and I, yeah, okay. Then also, if I remember correctly, the, um, I think the, the characters we need to sets that they don't auto-possess or anything like that. Disabled on auto possess AI and AI controller class, set that to none. Always spawn, ignore collisions. Do the same for this one. Disabled, none. Uh, always spawn, ignore collisions. Okay. And then we also need to place a long ball. Right there. Okay, save all, and hopefully this works. There we go. Super slow, and the movement feels wrong. However, our little menu works, and if I hit quit, it quits. All right, let me investigate why our movement feels so wonky. It's going to be in the Pong player, character movement, oh our default land movement mode is set to walking
Oh. What's it want? Weird. Okay. I don't actually know how to how to do that. So, um, just manually set it in here to flying. There you go. Okay, so there's one. Um, and if I launch a second one, I should be able to find that game when I hit join. I don't have any, like, um, it's searching in the background, but you don't know what it is. So there it is. And it starts. And the other, and I'm controlling this side. Whoop! Alright, so our goal did not restart correctly, but it got me a point. So we just need to debug why the ball did not restart. Go look at... Maybe I didn't... Uncomment something out. So let's take a look at Pong Ball. Yep. We still need to do some stuff here. Okay, we can uncomment that and include that. So if we hit a pong wall, we have the ball linear velocity again is the static mesh component get the physics linear velocity and the const f vector we're just making a new ball linear velocity this time and f vector we want to get the balls linear velocity in the x reverse it keep the same linear velocity in the y and the same linear velocity in the z and then the static mesh component set physics linear velocity to the new ball linear velocity. And now with the goal, if we hit a goal, goal include, not the forward declaration. Um, if it's a pong goal, the goal handles the scoring, the ball just needs to restart. That's it. Okay. Launch again. There's one game. Waiting for player two. And there we go. I score. Restarts. I score again. Restarts. Score. Game over. It stops. Can I play again? Yes. And then the other person hits yes as well. Now I'm on this side. There you go. So there is a... Ooh, hold on. Okay, so our, our constraints, our up and down constraints are slightly off. I won't know, so I'm out. The other guy also quit because it quit. So there... There is your... Your Pong game. It just needs... Uh, you can clean it up. Fix things. Our paddles, for some reason, I think it's because um, my measurements or things are slightly, 
slightly off. Um, probably, yeah, because I just, I made the geometry probably a little different in my other software, so you just need to figure out and, and play around with where the constraints are. But there you go. That's how you make Pong in Unreal Engine. Um, one little addendum before I go. I did learn. Um, you may have noticed when we launch it up this max players right here, the connection fraction. Um, the current players, the server data, where are we setting that up? On create session. Public connections is two. Hold on. Here we go. It's going to be a uh, number of public... Oh, so, yeah, two minus the number of public open... Uh, open public connections. Um, sorry, that's the, that's the log. This is going to be two minus number of posts so over that. But there's also a bug in um, the, uh, what do you call it? The null subsystem. Um, and I think it can be fixed by session name is actually going to be, uh, rather than passing an Unreal Pong session in there, you wanna go with a macro Here, of game underscore name underscore game session. There you go. Yeah. So if I go ahead and compile that again, this is a macro in engine, um, so that it, it that string d doesn't pull up a null. Um, there's a good course on Udemy, on uh, Unreal Engine Multiplayer, and they explain a um, why it was pulling up a null and it was skipping grabbing the current player's code, so it always came up as zero out of two. So now, this, we'll see if this works. Post. join and hopefully it comes up as one out of two yep one out of two so we know that there's room all right that's it that's uh that's pong and unreal engine so i'm gonna come up with a um with a new thing to work on i think everybody's really uh, i'm getting a lot of comments and views on a, a separate youtube video a demo i made on how to make two-dimensional uh like Paper Mario type stuff, so I might revisit that and play around with some RPG elements, something a little bit more fun. But, or maybe I'll make a Super Mario clone next. I haven't done that yet. Thanks for tuning in, um, and uh, good luck on your, your Unreal Engine journeys yourself. Until next time, have a great day. Go play some disc golf or something. <laughs>